name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We strongly believe that Holy Spirit is doing His mighty work in your lives through this program. Now we shall hear God's message by Pastor P. John Calvin. Dearly beloved, 1 John is written by the Apostle John to the early Christians who were confronted with an early form of Gnosticism. It was a heresy, heretical teaching. And the Greek word for Gnosticism is actually Gnosis. It comes from the word Gnosis, which means knowledge. So the people who were emphasizing or who are following this Gnosticism, they were saying that salvation means escape from this body. This body is evil, matter is evil, spirit is good. So, every matter is evil and only spirit is good. So, salvation means you have to escape from the body. That's what the wrong teaching is all about. So, what they say is, in order to have salvation, don't talk about faith in Jesus Christ and all those things. You must have a special knowledge which will help you to go to heaven. That's why they say Gnosticism is all about knowledge. They threw off all moral restraints. You can follow whatever, you know, moral values you like. There is no absolute values. You can do whatever you like. Because even if you eat and drink and you have adultery, you know, you, you commit adultery or whatever sin, it all affects only your body. Because if, anyhow your body is evil, nothing is going to affect your spirit. So this kind of wrong teaching was impacting a lot of people in the first century AD when John wrote this epistle. And this kind of wrong teaching was creeping into the church also. At the time, John wrote this wonderful epistle. Now, he was confronting them. He's refuting all the teachings of the Gnostics. Now, what John starts with is the privilege of a Christian. The privilege of a Christian is fellowship with God. Look at verse 3 onwards. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us and our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. So this evening our sermon title is Joy in the Fellowship with God. Joy in the Fellowship with God. The Greek word used for fellowship in the New Testament is koinonia. Koinonia means sharing life together or living life together. Now, believer has a spiritual union with Christ. You and I are having a fellowship with God Almighty. That is an exciting thing, right? Not through knowledge, not through our good works, not through our merits, but because of our faith in the salvific work of Jesus Christ on the cross, because of our belief in Jesus Christ, we are the children of God and we enjoy 
special relationship with god we have a fellowship koinonia that's what john writes here we have fellowship with one another and our fellowship is with the father and with his son we have koinonia with god that means we share life with god jesus is living his life in and through us what a wonderful privilege we have you don't worship god from a distance god lives in us so this life is never meant to be lived alone right a christian never lives alone a christian lives with jesus christ hallelujah because christ lives in me holy spirit lives in me so john says we write this to make our joy complete why there is joy because we are having fellowship with god there is joy in the fellowship with god you know if you turn your bibles to john's gospel chapter 15 11 i have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete hallelujah i am telling what, what things jesus told previously he told that i am the vine you are the branches abide in me i will abide in you and so that you will bear much fruit so jesus is talking about koinonia jesus wants us to enjoy this lovely deep intimate fellowship with him so that we will bear much fruit so that we will have complete joy brothers and sisters i always tell the difference between happiness and joy right happiness depends upon happenings right if there are good happenings today you are happy if there are not good happenings you are unhappy so happiness which the world talks about is always dependent on circumstances but joy on the other hand depends is connected with the relationship joy is irrespective of happenings today people may have shouted on me today the day might not have gone well but i am still rejoicing why because my joy is not dependent on happenings or issues or circumstances or people my joy is dependent on my relationship with god which is unchanging hallelujah because our god is unchanging my moods may change my thoughts may change my circumstances may change but god who lives in me is unchanging that's why i can have continuous joy hallelujah praise the lord so this evening uh, our sermon title is joy in the fellowship with god but john goes on to say that this spiritual union with god this koinonia this fellowship has to be maintained you can't take things for granted you can't simply say oh i can have continuous fellowship with god when you and i commit sin when you and i break the law of god when you and i walk away from god you know what happens we lose our fellowship with god we don't lose our relationship relationship will be the same but or we miss our fellowship and if we miss that fellowship you know what happens we miss the joy we miss the power of christian life so there is a onus on the part of the believer there is a responsibility that is you and i have to maintain this fellowship you can't simply boast and say oh i have fellowship you can't just boast about that brag about that you and i must maintain so in order to maintain this fellowship with god and enjoy this joy in the holy spirit in the god had continually the first thing you and i must do is recognizing who god is first of all you and i must recognize who god is look at verse 5 this is the message we have heard from him and yeah we declare it to you god is light in him there is no darkness at all first of all you and i must recognize who god is our god is light god is light the word didn't say god has light or god contains light no god is light that means whole of godhead is light here light can be understood as source of knowledge or illumination and many other things but here the main idea is that god is holy the darkness is john is talking about is spiritual darkness 
in god there is no spiritual darkness god is light in his entirety so you and i must start with this concept god is holy god is light god is pure but you may ask one may ask why do we start with holiness of god why don't we start with love of god you know why we don't start with love of god but with, with the holiness of god dr lloyd john jones explains like this first if you don't begin with god's holiness you will never understand god's plan of salvation then cross is unnecessary and meaningless see if you don't start with holiness of god you don't understand the significance of cross why should jesus come into this world why should jesus die on the cross because god is holy a holy god cannot tolerate sin sin has to be judged sin has to be punished therefore the holy god demands justice and because he is holy and because he is also loving he has sent his son jesus christ to die for our sins so that we also may become holy if you simply start with love you can simply say why don't jesus simply forgive all of us and take us to heaven this is what many muslims and other communities they ask this question right if god is love why sh- why can't he just love us and forgive our sins and take us to heaven if you start with love you will miss the point that's why you have to start with the holiness of god god's essential character is holiness because he is holy he can't tolerate sin sin has to be punished and because he is also loving god he gave his life on the cross so that we also would become holy we also would take part in his nature because if you have to have fellowship with god a holy god you also must become holy otherwise you can't have fellowship that's why god sent his son so that we also might become holy through him so he who has no sin in him has become sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of god hallelujah so and also dr lloyd jones continues says it ex- it exposes all false claims of fellowship with god now everybody says oh i know god i have fellowship with god if one really knows about the character of god that he is holy and he can't tolerate sin all false claims of fellowship with god will be exposed that's why you and i must recognize who god is first peter chapter 1 verse 15 and 16 mm-hmm. but as he who called you is holy so be holy in all your conduct for it is written be holy because i am holy hallelujah so god is holy and he wants us he demands us to be holy God is light there is no darkness in him at all and you and I are called to be holy 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 16 can somebody read it for us 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 16 who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light whom no one has seen or can see to him be honor and might forever and ever see god lives in unapproachable light see you and i can see sun or stars from medicine but god you and i cannot see and even angels cannot dare to look into the face of god that's why they cover their faces with wings god is so holy he's light and you know with such god you and i are called into fellowship So first of all you must recognize who God is what his character is and who has called you into fellowship hallelujah to fellow praise the lord James chapter 1 verse 17 from whom every good and perfect gift comes and James says he is the father of lights hallelujah God is the father of heavenly lights from whom all every perfect gift comes from hallelujah god is the father of lights he lives in unapproachable light he is light he is holy 
so in order to have and maintain the fellowship with god the spiritual union this koinonia with god first of all you must recognize who god really is second thing that john wants us to know in order to maintain our fellowship is refraining from walking in darkness if you want to have fellowship with god you must refrain from walking in darkness verse 6 8 and 10 in 1 john look at these words from john if we claim to have fellowship with him and walk in the darkness we lie and do not live by the truth and again verse 8 if we claim to be without sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us the same thing is repeated in verse 10 so you and i must refrain from walking in darkness you can't have one foot in light and the other foot in darkness and have fellowship with god you can't be like an angel or a saint on a sunday and be like a worldly person you know following the worldly standards from monday to saturday you can't maintain fellowship with god if you want to maintain this continuous 24 by 7 fellowship with god you must refrain from darkness you must identify what is darkness what is the spiritual darkness because holy spirit within us he constantly tells us no that is darkness talking to those people is darkness is you are involving darkness spending time with your phone for hours together is darkness you are engaged with darkness oh watching all those sites and engaging with this worldly news you are involving with darkness you are fellowshipping with darkness no you and i must be very careful with regard to our walk if you want to have a continuous fellowship with god our walk must be very very careful Ephesians chapter 4 verse 17 to 19 Okay Okay Mhm Do not walk as the gentiles do in the futility of their thinking they are darkened in their understanding and are separated from life of god you know their thinking pattern is dark so you should not walk as the gentiles walk your walk must be entirely different you must not have any fellowship with the worldly people second corinthians chapter 6 also the word of god says do not be friends with the world the friendship with the world is enmity right so what the believers has in common with unbelievers so come out of them don't touch any impure thing that's what the word of god says so john says if you want to maintain regular consistent fellowship with god koinonia with god share a life with him you must refrain from walking in darkness once you might have walked in darkness following the pattern of the world following the futility of your mind following the wrong thinking patterns wrong lifestyle but you must walk out of darkness the third thing that john talks about in this passage in order to have regular fellowship with god and to enjoy his joy is remain walking in the light remain walking in the light verse 7 can somebody read it for us verse 7 but if we walk in the light as he is in the light you know the word used there in greek is present continuous tense so present continuous if you continue to walk in the light as he is the light we have fellowship with one another and the one another means with god right you and god will have continuous fellowship so we have fellowship with one another and the blood of jesus his son purifies us from all sin so in order to maintain the fellowship with god and enjoy his joy right experience his joy continually you must remain walking in the light we all know the famous words psalm 119 verse 105 what is that 
your word is the lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path right so in this world of darkness if you and i remain in the word of god remain walking in the light we'll have continuous shedding of light in our way we'll continuously have fellowship with god you know the devil tries his best to keep you walking in the light continually occasionally you may walk in the light on sunday mornings or sunday evenings or now and then or in particular times in a day but the word of god says continue walking in the light remain walking in the light if you walk in the light continually you will enjoy the sweet fellowship with god but if you allow any darkness in your life you will miss that glorious fellowship with the father you know john chapter 8 verse 12 we all know that saying amazing saying from our lord jesus christ i am the light of the world if anyone follows me he'll no longer walk in darkness but will have the light of life he will have the light of life in him he will no longer walk in darkness if anyone follows me the greek word akolutio means walking side by side walking in the same road so if you hold on to jesus draw close to jesus walk close to him walk with him continually you know what happens you will no longer walk in darkness you will have the light of life within yourself you know jesus called us in matthew chapter 5 verse 14 onwards you are the light of the world how can we be the light of the world we ourselves don't have the light but as long as we focus on the lord jesus christ his light will be reflected in and through us hallelujah that's why in second corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 but we all with oh unveiled faces all reflect the lord's glory are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory which comes from the lord who is the spirit you know you and i must walk in light continually you and i are called to grow in glory day by day hallelujah day by day we have to increase in glory you know when it happens when you continually walk in the light if you walk in light you know uh, in a session by session or now and then you will not increase in glory continue on a regular basis you must walk in him continually you must behold jesus continually as you walk him looking unto jesus the author and perfecter of our faith right you must continually look into his eyes continually behold him continually reflect his glory continually walk in the light then you know what happens you will grow in the knowledge of god you will grow in glory and your koinonia with god will be very exciting you know many people they don't enjoy the koinonia they may have relationship with god because they might have accepted jesus christ they might have gone back god baptized but they don't enjoy this sweet fellowship you know in the benediction we give like this now with the grace of the lord jesus christ the love of the father and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us amen for all right the sweet fellowship many christians they miss the sweet fellowship with god that is the reason they don't experience this joy jesus said i am speaking these words so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete you know if you are having this koinonia with jesus the devil will no longer have any influence over your life hallelujah and you will enjoy the life you know you'll continually experience whatever may be happening in your life around you you may be hearing bad news or oh, he news about death of so and so people with corona virus or that and this you may be hearing all this nonsense terrible things all around but you know what happens you will walk in joy continually because you're not influenced by circumstances or the news or people or issues or your feelings or moods you are influenced by the joy that is abounding in your soul because of the koinonia that you have with god that is the secret of victorious life of a christian so john says you and i are so privileged because we have koinonia fellowship with god but you and i must maintain that koinonia how you and i can maintain first of all by recognizing who god is 
he is unapproachable light he is holy and that god has called me into koinonia you must recognize him second you must refrain from walking in darkness identify the dark areas in your life the friends that are causing you to walk in darkness identify your time spending patterns you know identify the areas where you are allowing darkness in your life and refrain from those things and remain walking in the light remain in the word of god remain in prayer remain beholding the face of jesus christ and you know what happens you will enjoy this fellowship and you will experience this joy and the glory of god and your joy will be complete you know once a man called robert robinson i told about him previously also he wrote that famous hymn come the fount of every blessing tune my heart to sing your grace lovely hymn he wrote you know but afterwards robinson lost fellowship with god he became worldly you know he was addicted to various kinds of sins you know once he was traveling in a train you know opposite to him a lady was sitting uh, that young lady was having walk earphones and she was hearing the lovely song and she was singing come the fount of every blessing she was singing she said what a lovely song sir what do you think about the song what a wonderful song no she was telling and this man had no answer he didn't know what to say because he was a writer but he is not enjoying that he is not enjoying the fountain streams of mercy never ending call for songs of loudest praise lovely words he has written and he left that place he went and sat in another place and after some time he again came back and again this lady was singing come the fount of every then this man got annoyed and he said what a lovely song no sir and this man he wept he was in tears he said i was that pathetic fellow who wrote that song i was that song i was that song writer i penned those words but i'm living a horrible life right now dry life miserable life and he was in tears and that young lady she she was astonished and she said sir you only wrote in your song streams of mercy never ending call for songs of loudest praise those streams of mercy are still flowing for you sir the streams of love of jesus christ his loving kindness his mercy which you only wrote those streams are flowing for you you can still come to him sir and that day robinson gave his life back to jesus christ he was restored into fellowship and he was he later was used by the lord as his mighty instrument dear brothers and sisters whoever you are right now wherever you are you are so privileged because you are called into fellowship with the almighty god if you have not accepted jesus christ as your lord and savior till now this is the time precious time god has given to you come to him ask jesus to come into your heart for repent for your sins let him forgive you let him come into your heart receive jesus as your personal savior and lord this is going to be the day of salvation this is the day we are going to start relationship with god and going to enjoy fellowship with him if you have already accepted jesus christ as your savior and lord but due to some reasons you are not enjoying this koinonia and the joy that is accompanied with this koinonia you must give your life back to jesus you must recognize that god is holy he has given his precious son jesus christ because he wants you to partake in his fellowship he wants to make you holy he alone will make you holy recognize god recognize his judgment on the cross refrain from every evil way with the help of holy spirit and remain walking in the light and continually experience his fellowship and joy let's look to the lord in prayer loving heavenly father we thank you and we praise you for the blessed word with which you have visited us tonight yes o lord what a privilege we have that we are called the children of god we are called to 
have a relationship with god and enjoy sweet and continuous fellowship with the almighty god thank you jesus for you are calling us into that deeper relationship with the deeper fellowship with you you said i am the vine you are the branches abide in me and i will abide in you and you will bear much fruit and your joy will be complete the reason that we are not enjoying that complete joy perfect joy is because we are not enjoying this koinonia we are not experiencing this koinonia on a regular consistent basis jesus thank you for the commitments that are made in your presence who ever have given their lives to you accepting jesus christ as their lord and savior right now come into their hearts and give them your eternal life your salvation help them to start walking with jesus christ from today onwards and those people who have already accepted you and who have lost this sweet fellowship with jesus thank you for the commitments they have made in your presence restore them back into your fellowship because you call us into this deeper intimate fellowship help us to enjoy this continuous sweet fellowship on a regular basis and enjoy the perfect joy in this sweet fellowship we ask this prayer in the matchless name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen amen beloved till now we have heard the word of god by pastor p john calvin if you have any prayer requests kindly contact us we will be praying for you our address christ house of worship anavarpadu second lane ongol prakasham district andhra pradesh our phone numbers 9502708377 and 9849792102